Okay, so in this video, we're going to witness how useful differential equations can be in helping us solve dynamics problems. And hopefully in your studies of physics or engineering, you will learn to love solving problems with first or second order differential equations. At least I hope you'll love them as much as I do. So let's explore a free fall example. I got this problem out of a old textbook. A particle of mass M falls from rest under gravity in a medium whose resistance is mkv. So mass times by some constant times the velocity. Taking the initial position as the origin and the x-axis downwards prove that. Okay, so we have three parts to this problem here, which we'll go through one by one. And before we dive into the problem, let's always start by drawing a few diagrams or depicting the problem in pictures. So let's say we have a mass M or a ball of mass M. Its initial position is at zero. The positive X direction is downwards and it is falling under the influence of gravity. So let's now apply some forces to this ball of mass M. One that should be obvious is the weight. So I'll depict the force of weight on the object with a big thick red arrow downwards. And we label this as W, which equals mg, mass times gravity. So the weight due to gravity acts downwards on the object. There's a force that acts upwards or counters gravity, and that's air resistance. So as the object gets faster, the air resistance increases maybe due to this increased frontal pressure here. And this increased frontal pressure may also lead to an area of low pressure, this area of low pressure behind the ball, which creates sort of a vacuum. And this vacuum, which forms these little vortices behind the object, sort of sucks the object upwards. But because we want to keep this problem simple, we're simply modeling air resistance as being equal to m times a constant times the object's velocity. So the key thing here is it's dependent on the object's velocity. I'll label this as F sub R for force due to resistance. Okay, now that we have the problem properly set up, let's tackle each part. And I've simply copied and pasted part A here, which is to find the velocity will prove that the velocity v at time t is given by v of t equals g on k outside of 1 minus e to the negative kt. Okay, so from our free body diagram here, we can sum up the forces in the x direction. So the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to w, the weight, minus the force due to air resistance, f sub r. And from Newton's second law, this is equal to the mass of the object times its acceleration. So from that we have ma is equal to, the weight is equal to mg, and the force due to resistance is equal to m by k by v. So already because we've got m's on both sides of the equation, we can just cancel them out. So that means the problem is completely independent of the mass of the object. So the equation of motion reduces to A, acceleration is equal to G minus KV. Now I can express the acceleration is equal to DV onto T. So it's the first time derivative of velocity, and that's equal to G minus KV. Let's call this equation one, which is a separable first order differential equation. And we separate this by getting all the terms with V's on one side. So I'll move the right hand side downstairs and all the terms with T onto the other side. So we move the T upstairs and now I can simply integrate both sides. Okay, so the left hand side integrates to the log of g minus kv over v. The right hand side integrates to c and because it's an indefinite integral, let's add an integration constant 
see to that. Okay, excuse me, I've made a mistake here. And for those that uh, picked that up, well done. It actually should be divided by negative k, as we've just applied the reverse chain rule. All right, so let's uh, multiply through by negative k. So we have the log of g minus kv equals negative kt plus, let's call it c star, where c star is equal to negative kc. The next step is to exponentiate both sides. So we'll have e to the log of g minus kv is equal to e to the negative kt plus c star. And we can separate this. We can write this as e to the negative kc, sorry, e to the negative kt by e to the c star. On the left-hand side, the e and the log cancel each other out. So we're left with g minus kv is equal to, let's write the right-hand side as e to the c star by e to the negative kt. And I'm going to write e to the c star as another constant a. Now I'm just going to follow the steps to isolate v. So we subtract g from both sides. Bringing the problem down. Divide both sides by a negative k. So v is equal to g on k minus 1 on k by a by e to the negative kt. Okay, so we're getting close because all we have to do now is apply the initial condition v at time 0 is equal to g on k minus 1 on k by a times e to the negative k times 0. Well, this simply goes to e to the 0. And we know that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And uh, the initial velocity, v of 0, is equal to 0. The initial velocity, as the object begins to fall, is equal to 0. So it starts from rest. So we simply rearrange. We'll get a on k is equal to g on k. And therefore, the constant a, the integration constant a, is equal to g. Let's label this as 2, equation 2. So we'll sub a equal g back into equation 2. So we shall have v as a function of time is equal to g over k minus g over k by e to the negative kt, which simplifies to g over k outside of 1 minus e to the negative kt. So that's the first part of this problem completed. Okay, part B asks us to prove that the distance x fallen is given by. And okay, there are two parts to part B. So 1 x as a function of t is equal to g on k outside of t plus e to the negative kt on k minus 1 on k. Let's get stuck straight into that one first because we did find that v of t equals g on k outside of 1 minus e to the negative kt. And uh, from this expression, the velocity v is equivalent to the first derivative of the displacement. The displacement being how far we have fallen. So I will rewrite our answer as dx dt equals g on k outside of 1 minus e to the negative kt. Let's call this equation 3, which is also a separable first order differential equation. I'll leave the dx on the left hand side and we'll get the dt onto the other side so that all the variables are on their respective sides. And again, it's a matter of integrating both sides. The left hand side simply integrates to x. The right hand side, first of all, let's not skip any steps and multiply the g on k through. So we have g on k minus g on k by e to the negative kt. And of course, we're integrating that with respect to t. And that's going to equal 
g on k by t minus g on k by e to the negative kt by negative 1 on k. And always remember the integration constant plus c. Okay, so now we have x as a function of t is equal to g on kt plus g on k squared by e to the negative kt plus c. To get plus c, we'll apply the initial condition again. Let's label this equation 4. And to get the unknown constant c, let's apply the initial condition again. So we have x at time 0 equals g on k by 0 plus g on k squared by e to the negative k by 0 plus c is equal to 0. Because at the beginning we start from x equals 0. The first term disappears. The second term is just g on k squared. So that means c equals negative g on k squared. So for part 1 of part b we have x of t equals g on k by t plus g on k squared e to the negative kt minus g on k squared. So if we factor out the uh, g on k we'll get t we'll get g on k outside of t plus 1 on k by e to the negative kt minus 1 on k. And that matches what we're asked to prove. So now let's go on to part 2 of part b. Now here we want to express the distance travelled as a function of velocity rather than a function of time. So we've got x of v equals negative v on k plus g on k squared by the log of g on g minus kv. So how do we get to this expression? To do that we have to go back to our original equation of motion which is acceleration equals g gravity minus kv. And we established that acceleration can be expressed as the first derivative of velocity. But this first derivative can also be written as dv dx by dx dt. So all we've done is we've applied the chain rule to the first time derivative of velocity. Okay, and this dx dt is simply the velocity. So that's equal to dv dx by v. And you'll see this more commonly written as v by dv dx. So let's sub this into the equation of motion. We've got v dv dx equals g minus kv. And again now this is a matter of separating the variables to get all the v's on one side and all the x's on the other side. So the right hand side I'm going to move downstairs. So we get v on g minus kv dv. The dx I move upstairs. So on the right hand side we get just uh, dx. And now we can apply the integral to both sides. Let's reverse this a bit. The right hand side will integrate to x equals the left hand side I'll rewrite on the right hand side. I'm going to rewrite the integral as negative 1 on k outside of g minus kv plus g all over g minus kv and we're integrating that with respect to v. The left hand side further reduces to minus 1 on k by the integral of 1 minus Sorry, I've made an error here. This should be a negative g. So we have 1 minus g on g minus kv dv. Now if you don't understand how I got there, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner here that will go through how to solve this form of integral. But for now, let's just carry out the integral. So we've got negative 1 on k outside of 1 integrates to v. The second term integrates to g by the log of g minus kv over negative k and don't forget the constant of integration c 
Okay, so now we have x as a function of v, and we've got, uh, if we multiply the negative 1 on k into the brackets, we'll have negative v on k plus, actually minus, because all those uh, negatives still come out to be a negative, g on k squared by the log of g minus kv and plus c. So we'll apply the initial value again. The uh, the ball starts at rest, so v equals 0, and it starts from the origin, which means x equals 0. So x of 0 is equal to negative 0 on k minus g on k squared by the log of g minus k by 0 plus c equals 0. So the first term goes to 0. Second term reduces to negative g on k squared by the log of g. So therefore, c equals g on k squared by the log of g. Okay, so putting that in, so we've got x of v equals minus v on k minus g on k squared by the log of g minus k v plus g on k squared by the log of g. So now we factor out a positive g on k squared. So we have x of v minus v on k plus g on k squared outside of the log of g minus the log of g on kv. And finally, this simplifies to x of v equals minus v on k plus g on k squared by the log of g on g minus kv. So once again we've proved the given solution. Now for the final part of the question. Okay, so finally we're asked to prove that the terminal velocity is given by v equals g on k and I've labeled this as v sub f for final velocity okay so in part a we found that the velocity is equal to g on k outside of 1 minus e to the negative kt now as far as the physics of this we have two counteracting forces here one of them is dependent on the velocity so as the velocity increases the resistance due to air resistance also increases proportionally so eventually we're going to get to a velocity where these two quantities are equal so the force due to gravity the weight w will be equal to the force due to air resistance and once we reach this state of equilibrium there's no more net force on the ball and it will reach a constant velocity which we call the terminal velocity now the thing is to realize we don't have to analyze any physics here. We just need to know that at some point in the future, these forces will balance out and the velocity will become constant. And the other thing to realize is I don't even need to know when this specific point is in the future. All I need to do is to let time t approach infinity because as time gets sufficiently large, we know that this condition will happen. So if we let time approach infinity, this e to the negative kt term vanishes and we are left with vf is equal to g on k. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a rather long video. If you've enjoyed it and you found it useful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I've got hundreds more tutorials here to help you with your math studies. If you have any questions you'd like me to do, feel free to use the comment section below. And also to help me make more videos for you, please consider giving me a small donation via the PayPal link in the description as well. For now, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.